next unit continues on with what we discussed with stability when we were talking about electron configurations and octets. We saw that in the previous unit when we talked about the configuration for our noble gases that we had an octet where we had an S2 P6 configuration. The exception was for helium. And we saw that all the configurations, as we can see, end in with the valence shell having an S2 P6 configuration. And this is considered to be the most stable configuration for an element to have. Elements, then, that are not noble gases are going to react and form chemical bonds with other elements so that they can obtain this configuration. So we're going to gain electrons so that we can get a configuration that looks like a noble gas, or we're going to lose electrons that can, so that an atom can look like it has a noble gas configuration. Another thing that elements can do or atoms can do is to share electrons. As a background, you're going to see Lewis dot structures used to represent elements. And it's a fairly simple way of representing them. And you see that we have our electron configuration of lithium as 1s2, 2s1. The valence electrons are the ones in the highest energy level. And Lewis dot structures represent these highest energy level electrons as dots. So each dot represents one electron. Beryllium has two valence electrons, two dots. Boron has three valence electrons, three dots. And we really don't make a distinction between the S and the P electrons as we go along. And we see we, as we work across, we simply go one electron on each side to represent the first four, and then we start pairing them up, and we get to neon with a total of eight valence electrons or the octet. Reason for the Lewis structures representing only those electrons is because those are the most important electrons. Now the easiest type of bonding or the easiest change we're going to look at is gaining or losing electrons. And we'll look at, you'll view a couple of videos to see how this works in forming compounds. But when metals lose electrons, and all metals are going to lose electrons, they're going to form positive ions that we call cations. And this is going to happen when they bond with nonmetals. Nonmetals then are going to be gaining electrons from those metals. And we will call these a negative ion or an anion. The Lewis structures can show us that we have a pattern. And within the same group, every element is going to have a Lewis structure that looks the same. For example, with lithium, we've got one dot on lithium. Sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, they would all have only one dot because they're in that first column, the alkali metals. Lithium loses that one electron, so it can have a noble gas configuration and look like helium. The Lewis structure that we would draw for this is simply to put lithium in brackets with a plus sign on it to represent that it is now an ion. And notice that we don't have the dot on it any longer because it has lost that valence electron. So beryllium is going to form a plus two. Boron will form a plus three. And you see here, in each case, we put them in brackets with the charge of it to the upper right to represent how many electrons they've lost. With nitrogen, we see that it's going to gain three electrons and we now put the eight electrons around the nitrogen to represent that it has that full octet by gaining the electrons, and it has a three minus charge. We see the same thing with oxygen forming an octet by gaining two electrons, and fluorine by gaining an electron to get its octet.